At five past ten, the latest on the separation of the Prince and Princess of Wales. Tonight, the Prince was at Guildhall in the City of London, his first engagement since the dramatic announcement. We'll have the full story. Join me then. How will Rangers fare against CSKA Moscow? The highlights on Thames tonight at 10.45. If your radio rent when you're moving is a scheme you'll soon be approving. Get rid of that veteran. Upgrade to a veteran. Now that's what I call over improving. Stay contented. Get radio rented. Share the fantasy. Chanel number five. Oh, what's this? Looks like the Piccadilly line to me. <laughs> Go haywire with the Haywards. challenge it's hard to put values to things this however is 42 a major new drama on thames helen mirren returns in a second nail-biting investigation our prime suspect has to be whoever was living here when she was buried i thought she was the very best person for the job you know, they're all lined up wanting to see you fall flat on your face. You'd better make sure you vindicate my decision. I'll do my best, sir. I want evidence. I want corroboration. I want to solve this case. Prime Suspect 2, next Tuesday and Wednesday at 9. You're watching Thames Television. In five minutes, today's national and international news from ITN. Now the time is 10 o'clock. There now follows a party political broadcast by the Labour Party. Things are moving rapidly in Europe. In three weeks, the single market will become a reality. For the first time, people and goods will be able to move freely around Europe. As the current president of the European community, John Major has had a golden opportunity to steer Britain and Europe towards a more prosperous future. In the European Parliament, the Socialist Group, which includes the Labour Party's MEPs, has been calling for action on jobs and growth. But John Major has seized no initiative, shown no leadership. What's actually happened during his presidency? In August, unemployment rose to its highest level for five years. Britain now has the fastest rising unemployment in the whole of the European community. In September, Britain crashed out of the ERM, the pound was devalued, and the government's entire economic policy was stood on its head. In October, the government proposed to sack 30,000 miners until the British people said, enough. Chaos and gross inaction have been the hallmark of the British presidency. It's been a terrible waste. The Labour Party and the Socialist Group in the European Parliament want to make Europe more than just a marketplace for business. We want to see it become a real community of people, giving employees a fair deal and offering all its citizens a better standard of living. But it won't happen in Britain if the Conservatives get their way. We'll be shunted onto the sidelines of Europe because John Major has opted out of those parts of the Maastricht Treaty that give rights to people at work. 
Until we sign up to the treaty's social chapter, we'll remain on the sidelines. In much of Europe, part-time workers have the same rights as full-time workers, the same entitlement to holiday and sick pay, the same redundancy rights. The European Community proposed to extend these rights throughout Europe to include Britain's six million part-time workers, but the Conservative government blocked the proposal. We want Britain to be a leading power on the European stage, setting the agenda, working to get us out of recession, with Europe-wide action on jobs, investment and training, working with our partners to build a peaceful, fair and prosperous society. That's the kind of society John Smith wants to see, and that's why he believes Britain must play its full part in Europe to bring the widest possible benefits to us here in Britain. With more members in the European Parliament than any other political party, Labour is an important force. Labour MEPs are members of the Socialist Group, the largest and most influential group in the Parliament. They're elected to speak for Britain. But if they're to succeed fully, they need the support of the British government. They're just not getting it. Things could be very different. What is needed is active government at home to rebuild the industrial strength of our domestic economy. And active government also at the community level to coordinate initiatives with our partners to tackle the problems that we share. Why have we seen no concerted action at all to bring down unemployment, the biggest problem facing the whole of Europe today? As the British Presidency draws to a close, European leaders will meet in Edinburgh this weekend. Will John Major listen to the voice of the British people and the demands of European socialist leaders and put jobs and growth at the top of the agenda? Will he put Britain on the main line to economic recovery? Or will his presidency fade away in failure and wasted opportunity? That was a party political broadcast by the Labour Party. This is Thames Television from London. From the headquarters of ITN, News at 10, with Trevor MacDonald. Official at last, the Prince and Princess are to separate. The palace insists Diana can still be queen. Their sons are told how the split will work. And the Americans show who is in charge in Somalia. Good evening. Announcements by the Prime Minister and by Buckingham Palace made it official today, ending months of speculation. The Prince and Princess of Wales are to separate. Buckingham Palace said the decision was reached amicably and the couple have no plans for divorce. The palace said no third parties are involved. The Prime Minister read today's statement from Buckingham Palace to a hushed House of Commons. He said nothing in today's announcement stops the Princess of Wales becoming Queen. The couple will now have separate domestic arrangements. The Princess has moved out of Highgrove House in Gloucestershire. She live at Kensington Palace. The Prince will live at Highgrove. This afternoon he went to see their two sons at boarding school in Berkshire to explain to them the consequences of the end of the marriage. Norman Rees reports. It began with cheers and applause for Prince Charles today, the day that would put an end to the speculation. No sign of the announcement to come, just business as usual on a round of engagements in North Wales. Yes, we did. Um, yes. The prince looked relaxed and cheerful, shaking hands with local businessmen, nothing to indicate this was the day to formally acknowledge his separation. The future king facing life with a live apart princess. Separate engagements for the Princess of Wales, nearly 200 miles away in Newcastle. If she was under strain, she wasn't showing it. The crowds as yet had no idea the announcement was imminent. 
the princess on one of those walkabouts that showed the special position she's established for herself. Who's this anyway? In my opinion, she's the best in the royal family. What do you think of the news today that she's going to live separately from Prince Charles? Oh, she's oh. not. She's not. That's the first time I've heard that. First time I've heard that. The news, Five first minutes. broken by ITN at one o'clock, confirmed in the Commons two and a half hours later by the Prime Minister. It is announced from Buckingham Palace that, with regret, the Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. Their Royal Highnesses have no plans to divorce and their constitutional positions are unaffected. This decision has been reached amicably and they will both to continue to participate fully in the upbringing of their children. Their Royal Highnesses will continue to carry out full and separate programs of public engagements and will from time to time attend family occasions and national events together. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, though saddened, understand and sympathise with the difficulties that have led to this decision. Her Majesty and His Royal Highness particularly hope that the intrusions into the privacy of the Prince and Princess may now cease. <laughs> they believe that a degree of privacy and understanding is essential if their Royal Highnesses are to provide a happy and secure upbringing for their children while continuing...